Just just make sure you open the window first, okay? <laughs> oh, that's what I that's what I did wrong. <laughs> okay, we'll call this uh meeting of the Hyde Park Select Board to do the budget to order at uh, a little after six on Monday, December twenty eighth. Um I'll, I'll Remind feedback for mute all or mute. Right. I think that's Roland. I'm just gonna. I just muted Roland because he was making some noise. Okay. Sounds like there's a little duck walking around there or something. Okay. Let's see. I will start with. Um, do we have any changes to the agenda, Ron? Do we have anybody else calling in? No. Just uh, Green Mountain Access is online. That's it. Okay. Um, anything else? We'll just, I guess, just start. Do, do folks have the um, the budget packet that Ron sent for the last meeting? Yes. It starts out with the right with the draft of December eighteenth. Yes. Okay. Um, Ron, maybe you just want to start walking us through it. Yeah, we could do that. The um, I'm gonna try to mute whoever is talking. So I don't know if that's David. Maybe. All right. Does that sound okay? Yeah, that was better. Okay. So, yeah. So I just muted people because we we're getting a bunch of feedback on the um, audio. So when I'm done talking, I'll you know open it up again. Or if you want to unmute yourself, go ahead. You can do that um, anytime. So in the packet that I sent out, there was sort of a summary page, uh, which we I try to do just to give you a big, big picture view of what's going on. And you know, starting with revenues, then going to expenses. So if you had that packet and read it, um, there's not not a lot of room to move i guess because of the revenue situation so you're already starting at a um, a choice of removing thirty thousand dollars from the unassigned fund balance which is something we uh, talked about last year to try for this year of course that's pre-covid so uh, part of the <clears throat> part of the impact on the budget's revenue if you're already starting out at minus forty one thousand gets really hard to keep to a three percent tax rate increase or less the other line items and highway and capital reserves are are a lot of those are choices too so as you try to do your programming whether it's paving or capital reserves uh, some of those are your choice and they're sort of round numbers you know um, for the capital reserves for example do you want to continue to work to the annual goals? And <clears throat> so for highway capital reserve increasing by 20,000 doesn't get you to the goal, but it makes steps towards the goal. Same thing with fire reserve, increase that by 20,000 in this draft, doesn't get you to the goal, but it makes steps towards the goal. Fire uh, so I don't, you know, as far as trying to come up with an easy answer here, there's there's not a lot. What we do in January is all of the wages, payroll expenses, health benefits, a lot of those fixed costs, if you will, um, are revisited just to make sure they're accurate. So they will change a little bit, but not by much. Uh, right now there's a 2% wage increase for employees in there. There's no new jobs, there's no major changes in um, what people are getting paid. Uh, the 2% across the board is in there. Uh, most of the outside agencies are level funding. We do have three new requests that came in this year. Uh, I can go over those three quickly. And those are the people that are taking advantage of the no petition COVID ex exemption. Uh, first one is North Central Vermont Recovery Center. They're asking for $2,000, part of a statewide recovery program. I think there's, I'm trying to think what the number was. There is 16 or 22 related uh, centers throughout uh, Vermont. 
uh, they've never asked for funding before. Salvation Farms serves Lamoille County with uh, farm to table type uh, food services, connecting farmers to schools and senior needs. And then the third one is Vermont Family Network, uh, drug interdiction uh, related to uh, opiates and other things, but uh, that's kind of Jen Jenna's promise in Johnson. So that's that network. So all of those add up to 3,200. Let me just check that number. Yeah, $3,250 more for those three combined. Uh, pretty much everybody else, I, I, I'm still waiting for some requests to come in. There's probably seven or eight com um, agencies that haven't submitted yet. Uh, they're all level funded, so you're not going to get a big push and in increases from those for those groups. Um, so circling back to revenues, um, the non-tax rate or non-property tax revenue is the negative forty-one thousand, and I summarized what that was about uh, in that memo. Some of it has to do with simply having a good low delinquent tax base for delinquent property taxes. So we're not getting the interest or anticipating cleaning up those accounts, so to speak. So those go go down as you get better, but then the tax, anticipated current tax goes up. Um, the, I guess this is wishful thinking, but the, the state aid to highways, has increased slightly over the years, not very much, but uh, we were holding them flat at 131,000, but we've been getting about 136. I don't think the legislature will reduce the state aid to highway. They did reduce their grants and they delayed grants and they canceled them all in 2020, but they still made the state aid to highway payment. So I don't think they'll mess with that. That would be a, a real big problem if they started to mess around with that 131,000 projected to be 135 next year. A lot of the other revenue lines we have are um, insignificant in this in the scheme of coming up with 41,000. Um, that's about it for revenues. So again, we start at negative 41, then you look at expenses, and then we can go down each each budget line. Uh, one of the cover pages that you have shows the tax rate projection. Uh, so with that negative 41,000 and increases to expenses, we're looking at a 6.12% tax rate increase. And that is not what the select board has tried to do in the past. You, uh, the goal has always been 3% or less for a tax rate increase. That number does anticipate a 1.25% increase in the grand list. We've been we've been about one or under for 12 years now, but last year we saw it creep up a little bit. This year we issued more house permits than the last 10 years for 2020. So I expect the grand list uh, will go up because of that. And also it's the last year of McMahon's 25% um, uh, tax exemption. So they'll be at 100% for the first time in five years as of April 1st, 2021. So we are, we do have that incorporated there. So as far as the tax rate projection goes, the grand list projected increase is 1.25, which helps a little bit. It doesn't quite overcome uh, some of these increases, but it helps. So anyway, if you want to figure out where to go from here, you can look at that first page where I summarize the major changes for revenues and expenditures. It's the, um, what I said before, capital reserves are in there. The wa new water charges are in there at 21,000. Increasing paving to get to the 250,000 a year is increased by 20,000. The, the patrol budget's up by almost 10,000. So you got about 100,000 in those five or six line items. And a lot of towns will go right after the capital reserve because that's it doesn't affect services, but it affects your future. You know, sort of like the government giving a $600 paychecks. It doesn't affect you today, but it'll affect the grandkids. 
So the capital reserve is sort of treated like that. Uh, we will have to pay those bills when they come due because we need all of the um, the money to replace our current capital equipment. So those those goals that you see there, the 120,000 for fire, 215,000 a year for highway capital, um, are based on replacement cycles. So as you as your fleet increases and inflation pushes the replacement cost, those numbers have to keep increasing. Even if it's just to keep up with inflation, uh, the 20,000 a year is a, is stays ahead of inflation, but it doesn't quite get you to your goal so that you can avoid um, loans down the road. So give you a, give a quick summary of what the options are. If you could find 30,000, either on the revenue side or the expenditure side, that 6.12% tax rate increase would re reduce to 4.76. So that kind of gives you the kind of the ballpark, if you will, how you look at the budget. Do you want to get to 0% tax rate increase? And that you need $119,000 somewhere to do that, either on the revenue side, expenditure side, or combination. If you want to try to get to the 3%, you're probably looking at more like 65,000 to 70,000 of either increased revenues or decreased expenses. So in the back of your head, keep thinking about where you want to end up. Uh, there's also looking at um, cuts to services. If you really want to go for the zero, you, you would probably end up cutting some services somewhere. I don't know where that would be. That's a large discussion. This budget doesn't cut services. Uh, it does try to maintain services and staff at the current levels, and it also increases the uh, capital reserves and the paving lines. So the capital reserves and paving is sixty thousand, and which is about half of your total um, increase in your revenue that you need. And that's about it. I think I just stop there for now and see where see where y'all are at hold on a second i just make sure i don't have everybody muted and then you can unmute yourself if you if you want to talk you're going to unmute yourself go ahead why don't we just start right on the uh expenditures and stuff and just go down through uh, uh, department by department and then basically the same questions yep so we're going to start on expenses if you uh, want which is the general administration expenses <clears throat> And what I'll do is if there's questions that I can't answer tonight, I'll take notes to get everybody the answers to them. So if you run up against a, why is this like this? And I can't explain it for you very, you know, completely enough, I'll do the research and get it back to you. So I don't know, how, Susan, how do you want to do this? Do you just want to open up administration and see if anybody has specific questions or do you want me to run down the... I can't, there we go, okay. Um, I guess it's probably just just sort of looking at the start at the tart. There's the select board. Who? Well, we'd save a lot of money if we didn't pay ourselves anything. <laughs> um, I mean, just sort of going down and seeing where the changes are. Yeah, the one of the one of the costs that you'll see is a and um, the health health benefit and dental for the administration. Those are staffing changes um, as well as me going to opt out. So you'll, you'll see some changes in there where nothing's changed as far as personnel goes, but family situations change. Or like for me, I got off the family plan and decided to take the opt out. So you see these deductions. It's not that we, somebody came off the health plan totally. It's it was it's either a classification change from a you know two person to one person or sometimes it's covered to opt out payment the opt out payment is about 
$4,700 a year compared to $20,000 a year for a family. Uh, the other large number is the um, IT services for NEMRIC, the $8,000. Right. And that is an option for the select board to expand the services from Tech Group. Tech Group is the one that uh, monitors all our systems and, and has a backup system for data. So if we were to get um, malware or something like that happened to the hospital <laughs> you know they have the backup system where we're supposed to be back up and running within 24 hours to 48 hours that's the contract so they they make sure that everything's current and good all the licenses are good and if we were to get a major problem that we could be up and running within 48 hours so that capacity is not yet in our annual cost that eight eight thousand dollars more will get us to that level uh, currently so what, we, we go ahead if if we went down now okay so if <laughs> let's see first of all if we if we went down now and it were an attack we'd have to pay x amount of dollars to get it back right I yeah mean, there's a couple ways that, that we yeah there's a couple ways we could go down if you will one is for somebody to click on an email in the office and get access to the server and then the 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 foe or the, the evil doer takes control of the server and locks it out so we can't get in anymore except to pay them up ransom basically uh, the other way that could go down which is a little bit less unlike less likely is to have uh microsoft 365 go down in the cloud which seems to be almost impossible but it could happen uh, 365 holds a lot of the day-to-day -day work files that aren't related to NEMRIC and our accounting system. So like planning and zoning, select board minutes and agendas are all up 365 cloud up here. The NEMRIC stuff is in the is in another backup system. So the backups to those backups um, are not done yet. So if, if NEMRIC had a problem with some software problem, some glitch in the NEMRIC side of things. NEMRIC has a backup to our, our accounting now. There's no backup to NEMRIC though, for example. So if, there, if there's a, a perfect disaster where multiple layers get attacked, then we wouldn't have a backup to NEMRIC. Very, I almost think it's almost impossible, but that's what this extra layer uh, would provide is another backup to that the other issue is the uh, 365 which deals with select board work papers agendas you know animal control ordinances all those documents those are backed up on 365 but there's nothing at 365 so but they call that cloud to cloud backup if you're familiar with that term you're basically backing up another uh, backup so, so if we wanted to go for, forward with it, I'd have Dave uh, Bora, who's the sales guy from Tech Group, explain all that a little bit more technical. But that's basically the essence of it: is they're they're providing a system so that we're totally protected against ninety percent, ninety five percent of what we might face today. So if we weren't protected and we went down, what would be the cut? What would what would the town see? What would taxpayers see? What would happen? Yeah, you get, would happen? you get Yeah, so it, the, immediately you potentially would lose the website and you'd lose the um, ability to go online to talk to Kim's online records, land records. So the online record system would go down. That's run through the server. Uh, the emails would go down because those are all through the server. So you'd have you'll have you'd have phone connection only to the town office at that point if the server goes down because all those things run through the server. Town staff wouldn't like today. I was online plenty of times going to Kim's online record system to do research, so I wouldn't be able to do that. I physically you know, you'd physically have to go to the town office to get in there and do that research. The guarantee, if there is such a thing as a guarantee, is that tech group would come in and get us back whole within 48 hours 
uh, under the current system, we wouldn't have a backup for 365 if that went bad, which is provided by this extra cost. And the server backup uh, would be complete. So for example, the server does a lot of things in the office. One of them is it runs Nemric, another one does email, another one it does the website. So there's a lot of things tied to the town server. I believe that emails, a long, long history of email, is not in a backup mode for very long. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's 90 days or there's some, there's some, there is a backup to, to the email that goes through the server, but it's not a long-term one. Dave couldn't, Dave Boro couldn't answer the question for me about how long because we're supposed to keep emails. <laughs> so that's a technical question he was gonna research, but if we're gonna invest in this, one of the questions is retainage. Retainage being how long do all our, all our records have to be kept somewhere safe? And with everything pretty much digital, we wanna make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing with retainage and have it accessible and preserved and all that stuff. Hey, Ron. Does the yeah. town does the town lose revenue with this internet Nemric stuff? I know we used to charge a uh, uh, vault time, and, and if they're going in home, not coming in there, and they're not paying vault time. So I'm just wondering if the town's losing any revenue because of it. Um, we buy well. You talk about Nemric itself for the accounting. We have two, yeah. we had two, two no, the bulk the hours. What's that? The, the lawyers and, uh, you know, the people that are doing the, the land records and the title searches and yada, yada, yada. Every time they come in, got in the vault, we used to have what we call the vault charge. And, and oh, the, they, yeah, the vault time. Yeah. Vault time. Now, if they're on the internet, they're not doing that. So I'm wondering if the town is losing revenue because of it. Uh, well, they still there's still the recording fee, which is the bigger one. That's the big um, per page fee. That hasn't changed at all. So anything going in the land records is still revenue. The online system is a fee based system, so there is a charge for getting access to that. I don't I don't know how they compare, but there is a fee to to download the files. So when you what you're talking about is is there a loss because people have reduce the number of download files so if you're on the online system you can browse for free but if you want to download a document for your legal records you pay a fee so the difference is what you're talking about there's still a fee but I don't know what the difference is on that between vault vault time was never that much it was it's it's small compared to the recording of the documents, which is in your $30,000 $30, one. I think the vault time was, I, I don't even know if we keep track of it. <laughs> so I'll, I'll ask Kim that next week to say, what is the difference of the new online system? She's had it long enough that she should be able to tell us what she's seen for revenue. Okay. And, and the only other thing I've seen as far as the uh, uh, municipal expenses is, uh, the town listers and i'm just saying this because of the budget is when we went into this back with don retiring and jewel selling her place and moving away that was not ever supposed to be a 40-hour job it was supposed to be a 32-hour job and so we as the select board come to the conclusion a decision that Kristen could take up the eight hours in the listers position, which would make it a 40 hour job where eight hours of pay would be out of the listers office and 32 would be out of the, where it is now. And right now I can't see any difference than in the way it was. That part of the plan didn't work out as planned. How's that? I think, I I think the, that. Uh, I think the, uh, the, I don't know if it's actually zero from eight, you know, to, to get specific about it, how many hours she helps out doing things that Julie would have done. Julie's in the office as an assistant to the listers, not as a lister anymore, but as an assistant employee 
four hours a week. Um, Kristen does do some of the assessment assistance, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if it's anything different than Kim normally would have done. You know, can you pull my assessment card? I don't, I, you don't really need to be a lister for that job. That should be part of the town clerk's jobs generally, show, showing people where to get that from. So that's a, kind of a question question for Kim too. Right. Well, and, and I think again, this is part of where COVID, because the what we what we planned to have happen was that Julie was going to work with Kristen to train her on those things, and that's that's what hasn't happened. Um, again, I think a lot of that sort of stuff has fallen behind. But Ron and I talked about it. Said, yeah, we need to. Um, we, we need to we need to figure out something and i think possibly with the listing is we're going to need to we're going to need to ship it all out and i'm not quite sure besides money i'm not quite sure what that means or how much month or how much work um again how we'd sort that out with with the work that can be then done in office as opposed to having it all shipped out uh, I, I guess just to give everybody an idea of what we're what we had gotten to when Julie had uh, had her place on the market and she was getting ready to leave, we came up with a plan to um, have somebody take over the assessment services for the town, and that was resolved by coming up with. Sort, sort of two different ways to deal with it. One was to hire somebody new, which would be, an, again, sort of what Julie is doing now, which is assisting the, the elected listers, or hiring out basically a hired assessor. So assessor services through NEMREC was, uh, I don't even want to, you know, could be 50,000 a year. I'm, I'm just guessing, it could be 30,000 a year. Whatever it's gonna be, it's not in the budget. So if Julie, if Julie was going to say, you know, next week that we got a buyer for our house and we're moving, the two elected listers do not know how to do the town assessment jobs. So they would either have to quit their day jobs and try to get up to speed, or they would go to you as a select board and say, we need 50000 to fix this problem, which we don't have. So... The only other option is trying to train somebody or hire somebody to take Julie's place, and I I don't I don't know if that's easily done. That hiring somebody to come in for four days, four hours a week could be possible. Um, basically, just take over Julie's role as she is now. But if you can't find anybody, you're sort of left with Nemrick. And people that like to do assessment services for towns these days, uh, due to the training requirements, is pretty pretty light to choose from if you can find anybody to do it. So can we can we say this is post COVID and uh, uh, and train? Uh, uh, Kristen. Kristen, thank you very much. Uh, train Kristen after uh, the offices get back open and stuff. Yeah, and it's all, it would almost be good, you know, to, to again to focus on this with Kim. You know, I don't I don't want to say COVID's changed it all. Anything with the office, they're still doing split shifts and they're still doing appointments. I don't think there's that many times where Kim and Kristen are in the office at the same time. Um, but to focus on Kristen getting trained somehow, whether that, I know she started to do some training with the, the league and the state lister association, but I don't know where she's at with that. Uh, if Julie were to leave tomorrow, we would, we wouldn't be able to help her train. So should, you know, while Julie's here, should we tell them to figure out a schedule between Kim, you know, Kim knowing that part of the 40, is supposed to be for training and ask Julie if she can find some time in the week to sit with Kristen and just put a little more emphasis on making that happen while Julie's still here. Uh, that that we haven't we haven't sort of asked that question yet to 
because because think, of COVID, we haven't asked that question or forced right. it. While Julie's still here, we might want to take advantage of her. Yeah, I think that's the first question that we should ask Ron, um, and uh, have the conversation with I think with Kim and Christian that remembering this was you know it was it was thirty two hours and the eight hours was doing this. Um, and and see where we are from there. See if Julie will come in and do some training. Make sure Christian wants to do it. Maybe Christian would be in the complexities of life. Maybe she'd be happier working 32 hours a week. I, you know, you don't. I guess that's probably all the stuff we should find out first. I I don't. I don't see when Julie leaves. We can we can look for somebody to come in and do that job. But I will be stunned if we can find anybody and my concern um, actually it's closer to a fear <laughs> is is that we're going to have to come up with fifty thousand dollars and head off for you know have have it done completely outside i don't um it's hard enough to get people uh, staying for lister and and julie put some nice pressure on, on the ones we have to get them to stay so um, it's and and again the the assessment question was going around earlier because I think a lot of communities are are getting where they stand on their appraisals um, out of whack because every town most many towns are experienced this property selling way over their listed values. I mean I know a couple of properties in town that I, I can't believe I can't believe what they've sold. Um, so. So I think that's going to, that's, and again, that's not going to be a Hyde Park problem. I think that's going to be a problem the state's going to have to look at because it's suddenly sort of the entire state at the whack with their appraisals because of the oddness of the COVID people from away paying anything bump that's, that's been going on. Um, yeah, regardless, uh, uh, that, we can start that with Julie and, and Kim and help me to get that going. Just, uh, you know, just going back onto what we decided on back in the day. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, the other, just a just a fine point, I could hear Kim talking to me uh, late last, I think it was over the summer when we were first talking about this and she's, she uses 35 hours and Dave's been using 32. I can't find any notes on that split, but I haven't looked too hard, so I just, if anybody has any recollection about that, I, mean, I want to just not have that as a question. I don't want. I don't want to have the. I want to have everybody agree to what that is. So if anybody has a 30, 32 or thirty-five note somewhere, <laughs> that would be. Do Do we maybe have it in her letter of hire? Yeah. Well, I, I'll. That Kim did that, so I to go ask Kim. Let me let me see if she. I think she sent it to me. If I can find it quick, while you guys can carry on. Okay. No, that's okay. But I, I think mostly looking at, you know, it basically at, at the town offices and wages, the, the only way to save a chunk is if we decide we don't want to do the additional protection. And there's $8,000 there. I'm not saying we do it, but just in terms of going through now and looking for money, that's that's the only place that there's any money. Anybody see anything else? How much have we got into the fire equipment fund? Oh. Um, Matt? Is he asking about a balance as of today? Yeah. Yeah. Fire equipment repairs. The capital fund. Yeah, what's the balance? Yeah, I don't don't have those i asked uh, allison to prepare those because we're getting we have to we're publishing those in the uh, town report so i right. have a note down here to fill those in for you as of june 30 2020 that's that's what we'll publish is the june 30 2020 numbers uh last year that's uh, probably are you talking about uh, vehicles or the equipment fund, Roger? Equipment. Not the vehicles. Small. 
um, well, the, the small equipment had had minimal dollars. I think it was like under ten thousand dollars. The equipment got uh, the vehicle one got spent to pay for the uh, the new North Hyde Park truck. So I'll have to get you a new balance on that. But it was it was hit by that expenditure. But I'll get a good number for you. Okay. Are we on the highway now, Ron? Yes. I, the only question I got with the highway, it's a, the health benefit, dental and a opt out. You got 46,200. That, that may be low because if this new person we got is not on the opt out, that, that's going to go up by. Uh, yeah, so in the projection for highway, we have a. Yeah, so we had the Hulier was an opt out and we didn't put a family plan in this place. Put it that way. <laughs> that's right. Because if I look at if I look at one of the other employees that's on a family plan, that's eighteen thousand with the with yeah. the, all the insurance, dental, vision, and health. Now if this new person comes on, gets on that family plan, that's gonna increase that line. Yeah, it'll be, well it's about five thousand about five thousand on the uh, opt out cost. Right. So, so it'd be twelve thousand dollars difference. Be the difference, yep. Yeah, so twelve, thirteen thousand dollars is missing if there's a family plant uh, from an opt out. Right. Yeah. No, uh, Dave, Dave, you're you supposed know, part, to be finding where we can save money, not how we spend more. <laughs> that's coming up. <laughs> Okay, uh, roadside cutting, hazard, and tree and brush. We, we budget $12,000, but we've only been spending 7000 to do it. And I thought with this, uh, uh, after this is the third year, and I thought after the third year that all the town was going to be all major cut and brush, where it's just going to be maintenance now. Yeah, the... Um the twelve thousand is two numbers. Uh, it's seven thousand for the rental, mm -hmm. which had been two weeks. I'm not sure if, if Mark is ready to go to one week on that and keep up with the mileage. That's a question. So whether that's thirty five hundred or seven thousand is sort of that that question alone. The five thousand is for hazard tree removal which we're just starting to do so went up to twelve thousand in fy 20 but mark wasn't ready to sort of implement it then so we didn't spend that money this yeah. year we 21 we have spent money trying to get hazard tree removal back up to speed so that's five thousand on its own and that's a new program that we're trying to get get the trees and the ash and the elm that are f failing in the road out of the way um, but if you can save 3500 that's 3500 saved i think so i think that's a that's probably a good question for brian and mark to get confirmation on is can the seven thousand be cut in half because we're not going to need that roadside mower for two consecutive weeks yes i've uh, i've talked to mark and um I was over there at the shop, um, I think it was uh, last Tuesday anyways, and um, he and I talked about sitting down and going over the budget, and he said he had something to get together, and then uh, he and I were gonna sit down and see what we could pull together. Since it's the largest piece of the pie, I think we need to, to look at it and see what we can uh, come up with. So we'll just work on it together and see, and I'll make that suggestion of what you just said about the cutting, the, uh, 
you know, if, if those guys are out of the shop working, which, they, which I'm sure they are, how in the world can they run a $5,500 electric bill when, when nobody's in the shop? If they go in the morning, hop in the truck and go to work, and come back at night and drop the trucks off, how in the world can they spend $5,500 in electricity? One thing, one thing that could be done on that is the same thing as what happened in uh, uh, Morristown garages. They put in an automatic sensor system, so when they're in there, the lights come on, and now the lights go off automatically when there's motion in there. And, it, and I bet it saved. I don't know if Roland can uh, attest to that or not, but uh, I imagine that would save us uh, quite a bit of money uh, just by implementing a little bit. But it would take a little bit of a cost to put it in. Because, because. Boy, it was in the last five years, wasn't it, Ron? We put in all those high efficiency lights. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's probably 10 years now, Dave. <laughs> but yeah, we did do that. I'm just looking at the electric bill for the town garage in September was uh, 230 bucks. But boy, then that's far and, and then. Yeah, then the winter, you know, the winter time, I've seen some close to 400. So I think it, it ranges quite a bit. I don't know what the reason is. So maybe that's another, you know, area to try to yeah. figure it out. We could, run, we could run the last 12 months or so for Brian to look at on the electricity only and just see yeah. what the why it goes up and down so much. Yeah, I, 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 I believe I believe part of it would be uh, uh, your bigger motors, like your air compressor. We just put in a new air compressor. In there, if you remember, and then uh, I think um, your heating, you could do. Uh, I don't know if it's possible to do something similar, like when the garage is not in use, the uh, the heat drops down to a, a safe temperature, then it comes back up. Uh, just things like that that could be done. Uh, and it, um, what's it called? Efficiency Vermont would probably be able to help us on the whole thing. Yeah, they they should be, especially if you look at the history. I think I think one of the one of the big draws was that um, air compressor. So that's probably was a good change to make for electrical needs. That yeah. is kind of ancient, so to speak. So anything that's drawing a 220 line or even some of the 110 stuff, if it's not, uh, if it's too big of a motor for the size of the power coming into it can draw quite a bit. But uh, again, just a motion detector uh, lighting system in there would be fine. And it uh, worked real good for, for down to the, uh, Morristown garage, and I worked in there when I was there by myself with the crew and stuff. It would shut off and turn on in sections, and different bays would come on. And I don't think it would be that much of a deal to uh, to get it implemented. I think the long term uh, cost savings would uh, would pay for whatever it do to modify it. Okay, just just seemed high to me. That's all. Anybody see much else there? It's hmm. now I get a, I get a question on on uh, the town. Take the gravel. The the town pays thirty thousand dollars or thirty eight thousand. What is it around thirty eight thousand? Thirty every thirty eight. Yeah. Thirty eight every three years to have the gravel processed uh we changed that we changed it last year okay but we, 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 we changed pay. it to every two two years to swap with culverts okay whatever so we, we got that thirty eight thousand dollars out of the town budget the yeah. uh halloween storm comes blowing through washes a lot of roads out and stuff and we haul gravel after gravel after gravel after gravel out of that pit for FEMA. Yes. FEMA pays right. us back. Where, where, where's the money going to help pay for that gravel? 
that the taxpayers paid to get it and FEMA's reimbursing us. Yeah, they'll, re they'll reimburse you for the material cost of everything that was used, you know, whether you bought it or had your own material. Mm -hmm. That money, when the, when the check comes, the, you can decide to replenish that pile, you know, do 65,000, for yeah. example, instead of 38, and replenish the pile if you want to do that so you're back whole. Um, I don't think FEMA makes you do that, though. That's your decision on how to spend that money. Okay, but where in this budget does it show us where FEMA money come back into the town? Well, it hasn't uh, that's, been yet, right? It won't be in the budget. It won't be in the budget. That's uh, a revenue that you're anticipating from the federal government that will be on the revenue side when it shows up. We, we don't know when it will show up. Right, but we still don't have it. So it yeah, would so be up loss. in the revenues. Okay, but when it does come, we 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 use wages for the FEMA. We use material for the for the uh, for the FEMA. We use wear and tear on our vehicles. We use fuel for our vehicles out to the budget. Then then it's coming back in. Well, it's already paid for by the town, and this is a reimbursement yeah. from FEMA. Yeah, it's paid. Those are all those are all expenses that were paid in FY twenty because that was a November. November 1, 2019 storm event. So we took the loss in fiscal year 20. So that, was, that loss, if you will, is still on our books because we haven't been reimbursed yet. So the check that comes in will be revenue, but offsetting your prior year loss. So I see what your your question is. If we get a hundred thousand dollar check tomorrow, can I go buy gravel? Is that what you're saying, Dave? Basically, I, I'm saying, can you replace the yardage of gravel that we yeah. use during the FEMA? That's the intention of the FEMA money is that we would re, we would be reimbursed for our loss. And you're asking two questions at once. You're asking a practical dollar question and an accounting question. <laughs> I'm not sure I can clearly explain this actually, but I can probably get a better better idea for you in a minute when I think about it. But there is a there is an accounting issue here too that if you want to look at the money, you're not you're potentially not going to see it because it's covering a loss on June 30th, 2020, because we put all that money out. Right. And you're supposed to be you're supposed to be putting the money back in too, not spending it twice. Even though when we we spent that money again as a loss, we didn't take our books into the red because we have enough capital put aside to not take us into the red. Correct. Well, we spent an in, we spent an inventory. Yeah. And we spent cash. So we spent cash when we paid the staff wages. Right. And we spent inventory when we used the gravel. Right. So. So we, and again, this is where you get into the difference between here's the cash and here's the accounting principle behind it. Um, I, I get lost on the accounting principles pretty fast, Dave. I did. Um, yeah, but but so so fortunately, we the the town of Hyde Park was in a situation that we didn't have to go out and borrow money to do that. Mm -hmm. So we had, if you to, to be really simple, we had we had the cash to pay for it. But if you look at if you look at at accounting, we operated those things at a loss that year. So when the check comes in, you can and again we can you can decide and that's where I get. So do you uh, technically accounting wise, you take care of the loss which means we'd replace the money from the places we took it, right, Ron? Yeah, that's the accounting side of things. So right. I want to be able to answer Dave's question better, though. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, but I'm from saying that if we... From the practical way of what do you do with this $100,000 check? Where's it going? Right. So it, we are going to get really, a check at some point. It could be it, it is, but do we replace basically... <laughs> talking about gravel, replace the holes that we created in our savings in a variety of places because we were able to do that and not have to borrow. If we'd had to go out and borrow 
was just use a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars, then when that check came in, we'd be using it to pay that hundred thousand dollars. We didn't yeah, have so to do of, that, uh, right? So right, when so these checks it, come in, do we repay ourselves? Or I guess the question is, how do we repay ourselves? Yeah. Right? So that, for example, for example, you have a policy of um, retaining twenty. 10 to 20% in your unassigned fund balance. So what happens if that goes to zero because of a FEMA flood event, that FEMA revenue should go back to that unassigned fund balance to get good on that reserve fund, you know, the unassigned fund balance, because you don't want to run that to zero and not replenish it. So when we do get that check from FEMA, some of that money that we've borrowed, if you want to call it that, from the unassigned fund balance, has to go back to the undersigned fund balance because otherwise you're you've depleted your savings account and you don't i almost got it yeah we, we borrowed money from ourselves to pay for this and all this is done is just putting the money back in the coffer that's the easy way yes you that's, got you got it yep why did you yep. say that to so, begin with <laughs> no well i think there's a piece the piece the piece i was trying to get at you dave was some of that gravel cost was not real money it was inventory. Right. Yes. So we have okay. two. Right. Right. That's the piece I can't explain enough for you, but I will. I, I want to apologize, Dave, because I had this already figured out, and I should have helped you with it, but I didn't. Sorry. Well, thanks for, thanks for that. You just you just wanted to watch us struggle, Brian. <laughs> yeah, that's good. See, this is this is this is and, the pragmatic was, learning. That's and it right. It was fun. It was. That's fun. right. Yeah. If, if we have to walk ourselves through it, see, we really learn it, as opposed to, oh yeah, right. I think I understand what. Brian and, there, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, no, that's right. So that's right. They, I think I think there's a there's a slightly different way to look at it when you think of of where that money came from from FEMA. So when we had those expenses and we had to pay that all those disaster people, the contractors we had to pay. Uh, town labor we had to pay we we grabbed some culverts out of our stockpile we grabbed gravel out of our stockpile all those had value yeah. some of it comes right back to the unassigned fund balance right so we, we knew we paid those guys without any budget because they're on overtime and the only place we're going to get that is from unassigned fund balance that money that we get from fema for the overtime and for the you know um material cost that we paid for out of unassigned should go back to unassigned yeah. as a reimbursement to our own account the the question i have which is what i'm going to hopefully explain for you after this meeting what do you do with a truck so we got reimbursement at let's say 50 dollars an hour for the town truck we didn't spend any money for that but we billed for it what happens to the gravel we charge so much a yard we didn't spend money for the gravel. We used our inventory. So, Dave, to answer that, qu a better answer your question: If we used a thousand yards of gravel from the pit up in Garfield, can we use a portion of that reimbursement to go to Menashe and replace a thousand yards? Well, or or Ron, you, you oh. must have a a breakdown in like the the amount of money we're getting back for the trucks. What we did. Is that potentially, of course, who, who knows when, what, can we assume the money's coming in in the next year? It's probably a big yes. assumption. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that would be well, a good assumption. But, yeah. but depending on what that amount is, could we buy ourselves a little space this year when you go to the capital reserves and use that FEMA money to, to replenish capital reserves? Yeah, I think when the money comes back, you, you don't have strings attached to it. Right, but in so, terms of not of not, you know, if you go back and look at what to keep on target, what we need to put in the capital reserves. Yeah. If we use some FEMA money to do with that, could that you know could we get can we get ourselves down to five percent, four and a half percent increase this year by uh, using the FEMA money to fill the reserves? Uh, with with those assumptions of getting reimbursed and me providing you with a breakdown of all that potentially yeah okay but so, so i do want to i would do want to break it out to answer dave's question about the gravel and the cost that you just brought up which is our capital loss because the trucks were used 
the reimbursement for use of the unassigned fund balance is the easy one. If we spent money from the unassigned, we should refund that. What about the capital loss because we used our capital equipment? What about the gravel loss from our stockpile? Should we pay Manash to bring in the lost gravel or make our own gravel to replace it? Possibly, so the 38,000 becomes 65,000 with the FEMA money paying the difference. So I'll, 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 it's better to look at on one little sheet of paper, but I think that's answers Dave's question and answers the accounting question. Um, Allison has got the breakdown of all this stuff because she's been putting the reimbursement together. So you'll be able to see what the real numbers are, but I, I think they're over $200,000, maybe even close to 250000 where we're at right now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sorry about that long discussion. But. No, no, that, no, that's okay. Dave and I have caught up to Brian now. Roly's being quiet. Okay, and I got Rogers. Rogers probably got it all figured out already. <laughs> well, there's, only, there's one thing I was thinking of. Didn't that cost us uh, at least 12 and a half percent in the photo didn't cover? I didn't, I didn't hear, I didn't understand that. Well, 12 and a half percent of what? I thought the, I thought the FEMA money, money covers 75 percent. Then I thought the state throws in 12 and a half, and I thought we had to come up with the other 12 and a half. Yeah, no, it's 92.5 is state and federal. We don't have any uh, tartar sauce. Okay. And 7.5 is the town. All right, 7.5 then? Yes. And then it's the timing of the money when we'll see it, which we're, I think we're both hoping to see it in before the end of 21, before June 30. Well, I'm going to try to get hold of Mark uh, uh, tomorrow and uh, see if I can set up a time with him to see what we can work on on some of that budget, too. So, uh, what do we come up with on, on that? Okay. Because, because part of it, even looking at it, except we don't, we don't have a, the uh, higher health insurance is in, but they're at, make it easy, they're up 3.5%, which isn't, you know, horrible. We figure out something with electricity. That's a great idea, Brian. Okay, mm -hmm. see what you can find. Yeah. Okay, so that's, public safety. That's, yep, highway. Um, pretty, pretty flat line. The um, I don't. I think there's another. Oh, maybe a thousand or two more, and oh, I gotta mute somebody. Back feeding a lot. I don't know what that is. Okay, I think that's Dave. Dave, do you have some background equipment going on in your no. room? No, no, no. I'll mute. It just myself. sounds like that. Um, so do the the one or two thousand dollars more for the fire uh, salaries potentially if. If everybody gets shifted to the fifteen dollar minimum, but I don't think the legislature is going to move that that stick this year. Um, they already have a plan to get there with the cost of living increases, and um, but you never know; they could have a bill to make it effective July first, which would affect the twenty one thousand dollar number for fire salaries. Uh, Ed didn't have a lot of changes; he had the up and down. Medi the medical physical one we've been debating with him the two thousand dollars a year he's reduced to a thousand I'm not sure what the thousand is for he didn't explain that but um, that's one change 
there. I talked to him about whether he could come up with a health and physical safety program or something with that money if it's not going to be for physicals. Um, of course, the water charges are driving the budget. Yeah, but I think you got a, I think you got a, you got a boo boo there, Ron. You didn't yeah. transpose you didn't transpose your numbers, did you? You got twenty one thousand dollars down for water, and it's a thousand dollars a month. That's twelve thousand. Yeah, that's uh, that's water. Fixed water, Ooh, the fixed know. water charge under the new system. Yeah, is that's seventeen thousand. Yeah, that's a thousand dollars a month, so I'd be twelve thousand dollars. And I called them up to see what the usage was, and they told me with the fire department over there, it's seven dollars per thousand gallons. So to get twenty one thousand, they'd have to use one hundred ten thousand gallons of water this year. Which <laughs> no, they're not going to do that. I think uh, that I think that line should read twelve thousand, not uh, twenty one thousand. Yeah. Well, Ed, Ed approved all that, but let me check something real quick. Well, I would too if that was my budget. <laughs> that part of the sewer too. Who <laughs> right, oh, no. I'm gonna pull up a bill here that I have. A bill, a bill. So the new bill for the fire. Yeah, so the, yeah, 1417 is the monthly charge for the base charge without the, without the water usage fee. Okay. So that's, so that's about 17, right? 17,000. Fourteen hundred and seventeen times yeah. twelve. Uh, Sixteen eight. Yeah, and then we're estimating three thousand. You know, three thousand a year for water usage. But Ed didn't know. He had no clue what it was. If he's going to fill up trucks, you know, all the time from the station because they're going to have a, you know, a way to do that now. So they won't have to go to the dry hot the wet hydrants. Okay, so you're you're saying their base is fourteen hundred. Yeah, fourteen seventeen fifty. Per month, plus usage, which is unknown, but Ed's putting in three thousand a year. Why? Why can't they fill out the dry hydrants? Yeah, I think I think if we can make that a, a, a explain the situation we're in, uh, I don't think that'd be too much of an issue to go off the dry hydrants and uh, and anyway, you can go to various ones and make sure they're they're operating right too. Sometimes well, yeah, they do that. They do that now. They have to do that now because the wet hydrants don't work. Yeah. Well, they will once the system's all done. Yeah, I know. That's what I think. That's why it's three thousand. Is Ed, Ed Ed's going to use the the new water connection at the fire station? So yeah, that's a, that's a three thousand. That's a three thousand. You know, maybe twenty five hundred dollar question if he could get that down. You know, keep some for the, uh, the building itself. Wow. <laughs> So we'll just see about that number being a little bit lower and then the fast squad. You know, someday this this is probably not a budget thing, but there's some, some we ought to put our heads together and consider if we should put the fast squad back in the fire department's hands. And, and the reason the reason I say that is you look at the labor, $495. How much labor we use? What we're paying them? 11, 12 bucks an hour for the column run. 
Yeah, 11. You know, if, if two if two people responded, that's 24 hours. And, you know, my opinion, Brad is the most active in that squad and the other squad. If you hear the if you hear the dispatch tone out, whether that's a car accident or, or uh, a fire, it always goes Hyde Park Fire, Hyde Park Fast Squad, and NEMS respond. Well, Brad is all of them. <laughs> right? He is. Yeah. The, 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 hey, only, the only time that they, they don't uh, call off the rest of the departments if it's a lift assist. And you know, for it's not a lot of money, but twelve thousand dollars. But could could we cut back on radios and uh, AEDs and stuff if it was under the supervision of the fire department again? Maybe we should wait and see what happens with the uh, with the election, and that might be part of what consolidates. Mm -hmm. No, just just yeah, just yeah. Consolidate. Well, well, I think particularly with the potential change coming up with 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 the election in the fire department, which is I got people have said things to me to me about it, so I know it's public knowledge there's going to be a there's a race there. Um, but that could be part of, you know, yeah. um, if there were to be a change, you're you're right. why you know there's no, you can only wear so many hats and now you start to consolidate some things right. And the only other question I got with the, the, the fire department, what in the world do they have for telephone service? It's $2,900 a year. <laughs> that's the, um, that's an extra charge that's showing up this year. I think they're incurring it now, but it's a, an internet, uh, an internet speed issue because they're connected to the uh, first alert system so there it's an internet charge that they pay so they can have direct access to the statewide first alert system through their phone it's a new it's a new thing it's not it's not a phone system it you know per se it's the internet connection to the statewide first alert i think is what they call it so i can add, i can ed had some buzzwords on that but it's it's basically a new cost that they had to do for this statewide response it just uh, stood out. Yeah, it does. Yeah, they, get, they can get crowned out on their phones now, plus their pages and radios. I heard pages and radio. What was the question, Roger? I said they can get, they can, they can, uh, they can tone the department out on the radios and on the pages and plus the, their iPhones. Does does Ron do you, does that connect into the statewide system? Yeah, I'll 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 get you a little paragraph. Run, run. From, yeah, I'll get you a paragraph from Ed about exactly what it does. But it's all about the um, the alert system that they follow for di dispatching and responding to the state. So I just don't. I forgot the name of the service that he added that cost us a decent amount of money. The, you know, the, I'll ask him about the fourteen hundred dollars, which is you know a little over a hundred dollars a month. It could be as simple as simple as dispatching to cell phones versus pagers. Yeah. Okay. Check it out. We'll see what it is. Yeah. I've got a question on the fire department. Uh, I was just wondering why, how come Hyde Park firemen have already got their shots when they were supposed to be into the second or the third round? Did somebody pull some strings? I know, first of all, I don't know that they were supposed to be in the that far down the that far down the list and i know a number of other places that their fire department rescue squad folks have gotten their shots too yeah, 
I can see some of those fire departments bonds of the rescue squad. I mean, you know, they have an ambulance service. Some of those people, you know, like in the bigger city, like the Burlington and Barry, them guys, you know, the, the, um, their, uh, ambulance service and stuff, you know, are run by the fire department, some of them. Uh, but I just wonder how come nobody else, is, you know, any other departments that I know of have got in besides them here in this county. You know, Roger, I think it's, uh, I think it's willy nilly because, uh, uh, I'm talking about the police department. Uh, St Stowe has got their shots, and and the Moyle hasn't got theirs yet. So, I, I okay. Just, I just is uh, just a just a thing that somebody's got to be first. I'm just going. I'm just going by what I hear on the news, which probably I shouldn't be. <laughs> I know it. I got Ooh. friends, kids who are over in South Hero, and they're on the rescue squads and fire departments and they've gotten their shots who knows it's all a mystery yeah i know <laughs> but we didn't have anything to do with it roger we didn't have anything to do with it so yeah <laughs> well I, I like the part we're going to see if they have any bad reactions then i'll feel better when they get around to us <laughs> the guinea pigs yeah hey that's a good idea <laughs> So, so public safety, it's sort of communications. We, we agreed we're doing 3% a year. We were doing that for three years. So this is. Second year. Yeah, I think that was. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. whatever 3% is, is what we're paying. Uh, this. Uh, supposed to be, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What? No. He, Roger proposed uh, uh, basically a two point two and a negative six on the communications and a positive two point two for patrol. I contacted the sheriff's office on the twenty second of December. And they said they were not quite done with the final budget proposal yet. So hopefully we'll get that right after the new year. But that that number is subject to change. The four hundred and thirty thousand is subject to change because I haven't. That's not a final number from Roger. Okay. Can we make Roger aware of the uh, potential deficit? Just so it might make a difference in his calculations um roger is aware of the that, oh, good. that we that the towns are expecting to pay three percent <laughs> what he does with that is another question but he's he's aware of that Okay, what's next? How much is Ned's, Ned, NEM's percentage? 3.1. 3.1? All right. In the ballpark, then. Oh, I have, I have a question. Uh, the office is closed all this week. Are we paying these people for those five days we're closed? That's not a holiday. Or is it coming out of the ETO time? Uh, that's a good question. We had left it that the select board was approving at least that uh, Thanksgiving break, I think, as extra time off. But I, I, I thought we were splitting the difference and having ETO cover Christmas. That was yeah. That was back, I, I was thinking that, I, I that was, was a long time check, ago. but I think it's ETO. Okay, did uh, everybody in the office get paid? That included everybody. I mean, except Kim because she's on salary. I mean, Allison and um, God, Kristen. 
Yeah, I don't, as far as I know, Al, Allison's working today and I don't know if she's gonna take any time off. Kristen and Kim closed the office. I haven't heard from Julie to see if she's coming in on Wednesday. So it's, it's. I, I think Allie was trying to take some time off this week. Okay. But I know she worked today and she's you know, planning to work tomorrow. Yeah, I was just, I was just curious. That, oh, it, it just don't include that town highway people, right? No, it was, it was just the town office app, which is, which is Kim and Kristen primarily. And then I think it was ETO for anybody that wanted to do it anyway. It was just, it was the Thanksgiving week that was the extra. So they got four days at seven. Yeah, four, four ETO, one holiday. Well, answer my question. Yep. Okay, what's next? Okay. Whoops. It's the the and the library is the same thing. I mean, I don't I don't see any real differences, changes with other folks. So, so are we looking to uh, do what we did last year, take 30000 out of the, uh, for the capital fund and uh, to reduce taxes? No, you're, you're on mute. You're muted, Ron. No. <laughs> you're still muted. <laughs> okay, we got you, Ron. Ron, muted. Yes, we lost him. <laughs> well, it's interesting. Ron, can you hear us? Look at the camera. We'll read your lips. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm unmuted. Okay. Ron, are you there? Ron, Ron, oops, he, he, he's focused. Can you hear me? <laughs> he muted everybody. Hey, technology. Okay, now he's trying Okay, here we go, Ron. <laughs> No, nope, he's still oh. muted. I think he's got a camera playing in the background. He's really not there. He just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like something happened to him. <laughs> it's a long Im term impact from the hip. <laughs> Roland and Roger really should have this on their video. So <laughs> What's that say? Ending, Ending them, reopen. Okay. Okay, so he's got to end this, and so that we may all vanish here for a minute. 
<clears throat> See, this is probably why this is done by the tech company. Intermission. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'll call Roger because I don't think he'll know what's going on. <laughs> Roger, hold it. Okay, Did you know that Guy goes? Okay. I thought that was, yeah, Rod, that was Roger's gonna, gonna call Roger's calling back. Okay. But that was all gonna be a thing by Nimric to prove that we need to spend eight thousand dollars more a year. I know we're bombed. We were bombed and disconnected. As soon as you pick up the phone, the whole thing just stopped. You must be on Wi Fi or something. Ooh, she's like hard stop. Frozen right in. Got got Rolly and Brian yet? Yep, yeah, I don't see Roger yet. I'll wait for I'll call I'm Rolly. back. Oh, Brian's back. Oh, is that is that Roland? Or yeah, Brian? I'm back. Okay. Okay. You hear me? Okay, I think we're all back. Yep, okay. All right. Thank you. I think we stopped at the... Um... Was it Nimric? No, we stopped the library. If you have any questions on library and library. cemetery commission, I guess is where we're at. I wonder if there's any more, any of the same sort of, uh, oh, wait a minute, at the library, don't they have the automatic lighting system anyways? You know, I'm wondering about their energy. Um, um, The hell was that? Hold on. Hold on. There you go. Is, he, is Roland landing again? <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Yeah, I think everybody's here, so. Yeah, I think, I think the library has done all their energy efficient electricity stuff. I believe so. Yeah, I think the, I, their their big increase is the same. You know, it's the water and and this and the sewer. Yeah, their four point nine two is reduced without the water and sewer to two point three. So just give you some idea of that. They did their right. best at two point three, which is good without the water sewer. Yeah, which I I mean again, I think everybody coming in, that's what everybody worked at. You know, worked at doing. So what um what next? Uh, I <laughs> there's no changes until you get to capital. <laughs> capital reserves. So I, again, I think with the with the capital reserves, Ron, you get back with the information about you know how much is FEMA and where it is and and how we could potentially split that up because if we can 
you know, if we can do a chunk in the in the town funds, well, let's just see what what options we have there. Yeah, yeah. Do you do you know, Ron, off the top of your head, what we're expected to get back? Uh, I think the last number I saw was between two hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand. What yeah. what you got down is, is the potential is two hundred and two hundred and forty seven thousand two hundred and sixty six. So make it a nice round two hundred and forty seven thousand dollars. And again, Ron, we'll get the splits to see how much quote we lent ourselves to refill those holes. And then yeah, what's left the, over what we do sense. with it. Yeah. Yeah, there's no. That's good time to start planning that, so Allie knows what to do with it when it comes in. Right, right. And if we if we have to go to zero on highway capital, uh, keep it at one hundred and forty, but throw some FEMA reimbursement there, then we'll be sort of even, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Without part of the seventy thousand, you need to find if if your goal is still under three percent. for the projected tax rate increase. Well, I, I, I think with the I think with the FEMA money and again realizing part of this even though fortunately for the for the town as a whole the the water sewage thing is well is basically about 1%, right? So if that's sort of unescapable and if we're really at for me then I'm thinking we're really at 5% if we can right. shop another percent plus off of that, and if we can do that by using the, the FEMA money, um, and, and I think a serious conversation about the additional $8,000 to Nimric. I mean, how much risk do we want to, you know, do we want to take? What what would really happen, you know, um, if, you know, if it, you know, it, of course, if, if if you get hacked and you have to pay your way out of it, it's probably a lot more than eight thousand dollars. Yeah, without without a good um, without a good backup plan, that's right. With a good backup plan, it should be almost seamless. So that I think that's the biggest difference is trying to rebuild your systems with a good, resilient, redundant you know backup system, or not being able to do that. And we can get partially of the way there because we are backing the main accounting system up. But we are with uh, Tech Group is where the the charge. Nemric is not the charge. They they increased our fees last year to five thousand a year when it was like fifteen hundred a year. So they took their big chunk of increase last year. This is a Tech Group services for um, online security, uh, some employee training, some employee testing. So they would send a a fake email and see if we clicked on it, that kind of testing. <laughs> so some real testing, not just training on a webinar, but you know, something coming into your inbox that you're not supposed to touch. And then, then you touch it and they'll write up a report on who did it and why they shouldn't do it and all that kind of stuff. And then the cloud to cloud backup uh, with the focus on backing up our cloud system. So we know we have redundancy there, but uh, I'll give you a little cheat sheet on all that for January. Okay. Hey, Ron, can I put you on the spot? Yeah. As town administrator and working in other towns and stuff, do you see any fight here at all? And, and part, two that, part two of that question, if you were going to cut, what would you do? Yeah, I think when you're when you're looking at these budgets, I I think we've always budgeted with sort of the bare bones on the normal operations. When we haven't looked at services, you know, it's, it's sort of ingrained in this budget and prior budgets that you are not proposing to cut services. Mm -hmm. So that's a that is a big question because you could do that and save money. Um, I I think because you're you have some goals with your capital that are pretty lofty. I mean, they're 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 trying to get to that fully funded capital reserve on multiple line items. If you were to look at those and say, "Is there a way we can reduce the capital need?" That's the same thing. So you did that a little bit with fire trucks. 
can we reduce a truck? You know, totally you know, by sharing equipment or whatever. That would reduce your capital reserve need for fire vehicles. So you don't necessarily have to have all the money to pay for these brand new trucks every 25 years. If you take a truck out of that plan, you're saving money that way too. And the same thing with your highway capital uh, needs. Is there something that we're not doing there that we should be doing? Do we have too many trucks versus just repair, you know, replace the trucks that we have? So without a lot more time on that, I don't see a lot of savings on capital reserve because we're behind the ball on those things. We don't have enough money right now to buy a new grader. We're going to have to take a loan out for the grader and pay the interest charge on that. That's another five or six years, but this capital reserve that you're putting away now at $20,000 more still does not get you to fund your capital equipment. So I, I'm sort of a, a I'm gonna call it a fan, but I will always advocate for the capital reserve to make sure that you're funding your depreciation. Now, having said that, if you did have a problem with two trucks going down at once, we had that in 2015. We had money to deal with that, but it put us behind on the long term. We had zero for one whole year where we didn't have any money in the in the highway capital because we had spent it twice. So not only are we just barely keeping up with the replacement costs, we don't have a lot of extra in the capital equipment. So I don't, even though that looks like a place to save, I would never advocate for saving there because there's not enough money right now for that long-term view. And there's not enough money to cover an un unplanned expense. I think I'm taking right reserves. out of the equation. Yeah, so I, I think you're doing okay at 20,000 or trying to get an equal amount of increase each year, trying to get there. And I think if you go to zero just to save 20,000, you're chewing off your nose kind of thing down the road. So I would lay out, I would, I would keep, if you're, if I was proposing to 100,000 more on highway to get to the goal right away, I'd probably be proposing cut it down there if that was in the budget. It's not in the budget because it's already been sort of cut already because we decided to work at it gradually over the long term. So there's no room in the capital to answer your question to cut anything. If we can find another way to replace it, like Susan was suggesting, that works too because we don't get off our long-term plan. On the overall budget, I think the library trustees, the recreation services, uh, as far as I know, control, you know, I don't know what Roger's going to propose, but if he comes at anything more than 3%, we'll probably have a problem with that because we had already talked about no more than three. Uh, library did, they're under three. They, they, barely have, they barely have service hours, never mind trying to cut hours to save a few thousand there. So I wouldn't focus on library. Library makes good use of volunteers as well as their other incomes to fund that department. So they're actually doing pretty good overall. Uh, if you wanted to look at other services, you're really talking about highway and are there better ways to do things? I think that's always going to be a question with highway. They, they do so many different things. Is there a better way to do things in highway? So we talked, we've talked about that before and, and Susan and I have talked about the, you know, the employee staffing over there. Can we move things around or do things different? Um, and, and with the same people or less people? Uh, pretty close call on that. You still need four or five people to get up in the morning and plow the roads if you want them open between you know three and seven thirty in the morning. Uh, but I I don't think we've looked at all the things in highway like we were talking about before. How do you save twenty thousand in highway? You would think it'd be pretty easy to do that somewhere to help us get to that goal. So as far as administration goes, uh, you do have that value call on on the tech, the, the IT line and the internet uh, security is really, it's such a reality today that we haven't done much in the last, I would say five or six years ago, there was hardly anything being done for security. And now we're looking at sort of getting to the end of that road with that $88,000. There's probably not much more that you would do with IT beyond that $8,000. 
Do you spread it out and increase it for two years? Sure, you can. I would, you know, instead of taking eight, take four thousand and save four thousand this year, but know that you'll finish that upgrade next year. You're taking a little bit of risk, obviously, right? Because you're not going to do it all at once. But you could look at that number right there and say, look, we just can't afford that this year. We're going to go halfway with you, for example. Um, anywhere else on the budget, um, I don't I don't think wages are too high from a comprehensive review compared to what I've heard other towns playing. It's, you know, Stowe just advertised for their equipment operator. Wool, Wool, um, Johnson is hiring in the you know, 19 plus or minus range, so is Stowe. You know, so for my county county wage thing, I think Eden just hired its seven. Oh, geez, like I'm trying, I'm getting confused with the towns. Everybody's hiring lately, but they're not hiring at $14 anymore. <laughs> they seem to be in that the sweet spot of, of highway is, you know, 18 to 22 somewhere, somewhere in that range for operators, depending on what skills they bring. So we're not out of that. Uh, range at this point. Uh, if you wanted to cut out, you know, <laughs> your cemetery maintenance, are you going to let your cemeteries go? No, you probably won't cut there. So I don't see a lot of different things. We could, I think the things that you talked about tonight, we should finish the electricity. I'll, I'll look at the IT thing again. Um, the fire department. Pretty, pretty, I don't understand enough about every fire department line. That's part of my problem with the fire department. I just don't understand all of it, you know, in detail, like the chief would do or new chief would do. It's a good opportunity if there is a change of guard, so to speak, to look at that, you know, line by line with the fire, new fire chief, if there's been such a change. Uh, maybe, you know, different chiefs have different ideas, you know, how to run a department. Wrong. So that's always not, that's an opportunity. Uh, you know, I've, I've talked about this before, but is patrol, you know, patrol services, which is a huge cost, do do people want less than 24-7? I don't know that answer. I'm guessing people well, like 24-7 patrol. When they come in, they want more. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. That's, an, that's another obvious, you know, a lot of towns go after police patrol services when they look at budgets. Jericho did that. Um, Huntington does that. Cambridge does that. A lot of towns don't have the... the Kind of the full police department coverage that um, Johnson and Hyde Park and Wolcott do, um, without a municipal department, that they, they take less coverage and, and take a chance there. So you're all, you're always taking that chance of less services, saving money, and then having some increased negative outcome. So that is a I mean, if you look at patrol and communications, it is a big part of the budget. They're pretty. They're, equal to you know highway almost on their share of the budget i heard was that Rowley or roger was a question payroll of the fire department but the guys got paid and remember last year we had some guy like 70 dollars and we're spending Three thousand or thirty-five hundred dollars on brand new sets of uniform, and the guy doesn't come to, you know, one or two fires a, a year. That would that would kind of fall for the management uh, uh, thing, I would think, with the fire chief. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. Okay. If you got a report to three, four fires, you know, three, four fires a year. And the money on a person to keep them. Well, I don't yeah, I think that, that, yeah, that's a, that's a fire chief thing. I, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah, you know, I know some departments, uh, as mandatory, you're going to make so many calls and so many meetings. But you know, a lot, a lot of this crap is mandated. 
stuff we can't do anything about is is you take that fire gear for a 10 year replacement well you take Hyde Park with 10 year replacement the majority of the calls aren't fires the majority of the calls are traffic accidents or or uh, directing traffic and stuff like that thank god there ain't that many uh the fires and stuff but we we, we still have a 10 year replacement on that bunker gear compared to somebody like Burlington that's got a 10 year bunker gear on there that goes to 100 times more fires than we do you know th th there's going to be some place sometimes somebody's going to stand up and say listen you know us small towns cannot afford some of these mandates you're putting onto us whether it's a fire department or or, or highway departments the, some of the ways we have to do the stuff it's just it's just ludicrous for small towns especially when you don't have any revenue coming in from businesses well you, know, you can't say that those mandates stuff that they want the mandates are there that you want to be a full-time fireman that's why a lot of those mandates are there. Uh, on a volunteer basis, I mean, I know there's a lot of other little departments in the state of Vermont doesn't replace that gear every 10 years. Uh, and it's only going to, you know, answer to four or five calls, and you're going to keep spending, you know, money on him? Yeah, I think that that's a that's a it's a yeah it's a question that you know some departments, especially I get if you travel out west or midwest, some some departments make gear last twenty years, um, not because they want to, but because they don't have money for it. Ed's Ed's response has always been, if we don't follow the spec and somebody gets hurt, it's back on the fire chief. And that's what drives him to try to keep you know everything in compliance. I've heard him say that more than once. Yeah, well, what happens I mean, when you know? I mean, for some of the how how do you know? You don't know what happened. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's what that's what the chief that's what Ed would say is like you don't know till you know. But if I know it's not in compliance, why am I going to send somebody into a fire that I know their gear's out of compliance? Well, and I think I think maybe part of the problem is, you know, is is we don't we people who don't deal with it all the time, you don't you don't know. That's it's an interesting longer term question. How do you how do we know? How would a select board know if that equipment is safe after ten years, or how safe is it, or how less affected is it after ten years? I mean, you know, you could you can get on a can of baked beans, best used by, you know. 721 that doesn't mean in 724 it isn't still edible they're just saying that's when it's best and and what we're really missing is knowing how long that equipment is safe and, and what degree of for not having another word deterioration is there in the equipment and i, I, don't, yeah, know, sometimes I don't know how you find you know, i don't know how you find that out because certainly the producer, well, maybe the producers would tell you that. Yeah, sometimes the uh, standards change too. So it's not just the age of the, you know, gear. It's the uh, standards have been updated. So you, you got to meet a new standard, not a not a perfectly good piece of equipment. Um, you know what? Well, Eddie should know who his interior firefighters are. Not all firemen are interior fire. fire. So I can see having new gear for those guys who are going into a building. These guys are then never going to go into a building. And he has got some, every fire department has got some. Some guys don't, you know, go into interior firefighters. Wouldn't really need a brand new set of gear every 10 years. I bought. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what his plan is, but we can ask him, ask him how he handles that. Yeah, that, I mean, it's. No question can be brought up because um, I know he's going to tell you, well, you never know who's going to go in. Well, you shouldn't go in there if you aren't trained for it. And not no, everybody's. If, if 22 are if trained and 22 are ready to go, that's different than having five trained and 15 directing. Training. I don't believe, I don't believe 
there's any whole departments that are trained set full timers. Or, I could be wrong. No, we, we. He knows that answer. I can ask him. But you know that goes with all uh, departments. You know, we we have a. What, what's their uh, replacement on our trucks, Rob? Ten years. Uh, you went. You're on a. You're transitioning from ten to eight right now. You're not there okay. yet, but you agreed to go from ten to eight. Okay, say it's eight years. Yeah. That doesn't mean we got to trade those trucks in eight years. Just becomes just because the 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 the, the calendar turn. You know, we we might be able to get another year or two out of there where where uh, 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 fixing it up is going to be cheaper than than spending that capital money and taking that money and putting it back into the capital fund right then. And that's where your extra money is going to come from. I've seen times, Ron, in my, in my duration on this board, I've seen times more than once that we got to get rid of this truck because it's not going to last. It's going to cost us money. We sell it, son of a gun, and the guys are still running the frigging thing today. You know? Yeah, the, 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 the way it should be done is based on the repairs of the vehicle. If the repairs are costing you more than what it would cost for the new vehicle, that's exactly. what you base it on. That's the way you would run your household, right? That's the only way I can run it. Yeah, this is this is the same discussion we had going from 10 to 8 about three years ago. So, so the, the cost of, and, that, and like I said, that's a board decision. You can certainly make that decision. The, the transition to 8 was done following the 2000, I think 13 or 15 model year. I think it was 2015 where all of the industry standards changed. So now every vehicle has a ton more electronics and emission controls, which are not as healthy in the long term as anything prior to 2015. So I think Dave, you're right. You'll see a lot of older trucks on the road because the guys can replace it themselves. The costs are not that high, but on the newer trucks, you, you're not that lucky. You, you end up with a, I think Mark had a, a ten dollar part and a two thousand dollar bill just because of where that part was and they can't touch it under the new warranty terms so the world's a little different in making the things last long the select board made a decision to go to extended warranties from five to seven years because of the cost of those long you know all these parts and pieces now i don't know what the answer is you know, some of the towns that can afford it are down to six years because they don't want to deal with the seven, eight year of this plastic electronic stuff that melts away with a, you know, because they put it too close to the muffler. <laughs> There's all yeah. sorts of weird. So, I I don't know what the history is, you know, for these newer trucks, but that that question of six, eight, or ten is a real question because there's a gambling that goes on especially with the newer trucks after you get past that six seven year window just to give you an idea extended warranties you can't get past seven years because they they don't want to cover those costs in years eight nine and ten yeah. or you know just as an example but you will see older trucks i i saw some contractor trucks that are probably 20 years old running gravel but i know that guy's climbing in it in every night tweaking it because he can do it he can get in there and fix something himself it you know, before he has to go out the next day. Yeah. But here we have a five hundred dollar tow job to get a two dollar part replaced. You know, it's it's, uh, it's not pretty sometimes when when something goes wrong. Someday it'll be feasible to lease the vehicles. Then you don't have to. If they return to electric, we'll go from twenty thousand parts to five hundred. <laughs> electric. They're <laughs> testing out that in Europe. They're testing out heavy equipment with electric. Electric. I've now. seen it. I've seen the uh, things on YouTube. And the and the parts reduction is incredible. I mean, you're talking about a tenth of the amount of parts that have to be replaced on the electric vehicles. They're just not they're not feasible right now because the batteries suck at them. You know, when you try to move dirt all day, I think you can get like four hours on a big battery, and you and, sort of need a ten hour battery. And, and you look at the uh, where they're testing it on flat surfaces. Yeah, there's there's no real testing right now. It's like, can this work? It might work in ten years, but we're not dealing with that in a five year capital plan, obviously. Yeah. Okay, so we got anything else? Are we in good shape? 
get so some I just, information I, back? I, yeah. I, I just sent an email off to Mark, and uh, hopefully he'll get back to me tomorrow, and uh, and we can uh, set up a time, and I'll, we'll see if we can get out of that out of the budget. Not that it, that's I don't want anybody to think that's my intent. Uh, but if there's anything we can squeeze out, I'm going to ask Mark first, of course, uh, where he thinks any cuts could be made. If again, get his get his uh, side of it and make sure that uh, uh, we aren't cutting down throat. Yeah, can we can we set a another meeting beside the regular meeting? Let me just look at calendar here. Um, or do we just want to assume, well, let's see. Well, we, we do have a couple of meetings we have to do. I'll go over those. Um, and then we can talk about a, another special, maybe on the 4th of January or 11th of January. The 18th, okay. is, the 18th is your monthly. The warning and budget have to be finished the week of the 25th. So some sometime before Saturday the thirtieth, you have to finish your budget and get the warning done. Uh, the printer wants everything February first or earlier. So it kind of gives you the next three weeks to iron out some of the bigger, you know, how are we going to get the fifty thousand if that's what you're after? You know, whether it's a combination of FEMA plus some changes you talked about tonight. Um, to get, so it to seems get to me if if you sort of look Monday the eleventh. Yeah. Then we can get it sort of reason. Hopefully, we'll have answers to all these questions. We can get it reasonably finalized, but that leaves us our regular meeting the 18th to do the final. Can yeah, so you that? could have a uh, yeah after the 11th. You could have another tax rate projection to see if you'd like it. <laughs> yeah. If you don't like it, you'll work on it the 18th. Need, if you need to, but I would try to finish up by the 18th to let everything else kind of yeah. flow. Right. Would it be if we do the 11th? Could we uh, shoot for like uh, maybe seven o'clock instead of six o'clock? I've got a training that uh, for work I got to do on that day, but I'm hoping to be out of it and back home by that time. Six, I think we'd be pushing it. But. Would would the would like the 12th? Would the Tuesday be better for you? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Does the twelfth work for everybody else? No, not me. Okay. Thirteenth. Well, then, then Brian, you're at work on the thirteenth. I am. Right, right. So we we need our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesdays. I realize. Um, okay. Well, let's just just try a little later on the eleventh. Can everybody do that? Seven on the eleventh. Yeah. I'll, I'll, ha I'll have a cup of coffee and that'll keep me awake. <laughs> that work for you, Roly? Is he sleeping? Want me to call? <laughs> Must have lost him. Yeah. Fast as bedtime. <laughs> I have a question about town meeting. Okay, go ahead. Um, so if we have a uh, town meeting, um, the articles, uh, you know, all Australian ballot, that means that all those other officers, like the listers and stuff that are elected at the town meeting, they all need to be aware that it's going to be Australian ballot to get their papers in. I don't know if anybody thought of that. Well, this, this, well, <clears throat> oh, sorry. You're, you're right. I have to look and see how many of those others that, we, you know, that we. Usually had a cemetery um, commissioner and all that. So. It's interesting. I don't know if somebody just gets nominated. That's interesting. We d we got to figure out. You're right. How to do that? I don't know if they have to submit papers. I mean, they don't regularly do that. Nominate them from the floor. Yeah. Yeah, I think they'll have they'll have to they'll have to run for a term. 
you know, submit paperwork like the select board did to run for a term. Speaking of dead, I gotta do it. Can that be mailed to me, Your Honor? Huh? Uh, yeah, yes. Kim, Kim or Chris, next week, Kim or Kim, and, Kim or Kristen can mail it to you. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Me, maybe, too, me too, Dave. Like, oh yeah, paper. Okay. <laughs> yeah, maybe though. Maybe Kim's gonna mail it to you know everybody that normally would be a floor vote just to give them a chance to run for that term, and you know, no petition needed. You just have to file the paperwork. Right. 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 Yeah. No, that's that's a that's a good pickup, Roger. You're right. We're gonna be there till probably three o'clock in the morning counting. Well, the ballot will be automatic. It should be run through the machine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Kim definitely said she could. She they were gonna adjust the ballot so that the the machine can do it all. Good. We'll be talking to Kim tomorrow or next day or something. Uh, I can email her. I don't. She's she's definitely closed the office because I kept on getting email back from her saying close till Monday. <laughs> so I, I, she might be checking, but she may not be. I don't know. Well, Do you have I, a question like, for her about that, or no? I'd like to, I'd like her to her to send a uh, sympathy card for the town of Hyde Park to Ken Harvey. Uh, Melvin passed away. Melvin was a town uh, oh, officer. I and and Ken's only family, so uh, I think it'd be appropriate to send them yep. from the town. Yeah, I, I, can, I can talk to her about that and see if she wants me or her to do it. It's, one of us can do it. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yep. Okay, we got anything else? We good. I'm all set. Have we heard from Roland yet? Yeah, I lost my mill button. <laughs> I got it back. <laughs> okay, so I guess um I guess we can adjourn, right? Anything else we need, Ron? No, I'll try to summarize tonight's um, discussion in the sense of the dollars so you can see you know, and, and get that out to you well well ahead of the meeting so that you can have some right. more time to look at the fine lines. And Brian, if you're gonna meet with uh, Mr. French and come up with any great ideas, let me know as soon as possible and I'll kick that around to the, all the members. Sure. Yeah. Roley, we're gonna, we're gonna do an extra meeting on Monday the 11th. Yeah, I got it. At you got that one? Okay. Yeah, I don't know where we'd lost you. Okay. Uh, Seven o'clock. Oh, right? Seven o'clock. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you might be out patching the window. You threw the thing through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be right. Um, okay. I guess then I just need a motion to adjourn. So move. motion to second. Okay, we got it. Second. All in favor, signify yeah. by saying aye. 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 Okay. Anybody oppose? Anybody not? Okay. We're adjourned. <laughs>